Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Finally back! It's been a while because this kit took forever. And so for today, I am painting Magnus the Red. Yeah, he took way too long. So I assembled him up to the point where it would get in the way of painting. His wings are separate, obviously. Head is essentially fully assembled with the horns. His body is in one piece entirely, the armor pieces on his ankles are there, his weapon is attached as well, his robes are separate, his book details, decals are separate, his armor plates on his legs and chest, or his thighs and chest are separate, the horns are attached to the chest piece, and essentially uh, there are a lot of really large gaps that are here and there, so I take Milliput, I it's basically like an epoxy kind of clay that you can attach together. I then apply it onto places where there's huge gaps and then once it's like good and good on there, I then take a brush and water and I essentially scrub it and what this does is it smooths out or removes the milliput down to where it gets to be very fine. In some places I did this very well, in other places not so well. But I'm hoping I can basically paint out the shadows. Alright, with Liquitex Modeling Putty, I will be applying this to the base. I want to create sort of like this small, like, textured earth. So after applying a thin layer of it, letting it dry with a hair dryer so that it's still pliable, it's just the top is dry, and then take a dry brush and do pats all over to create, like, the appearance of dirt. And then I prime everything with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer. Uh, it's really cold outside and stuff, and this stuff actually works really well with different temperatures and stuff like that, so it's a very robust spray paint. And afterwards we can take a close look and see that some of the milliput is seamless, some not so seamless, it's because I didn't sand it enough, but I'm uh, hoping to be able to paint the shadows out, basically. And here are basically all the paints I used in order to do this model kit. Uh, some I don't show the steps for because there were just some small random details here and there that like by the end I was just sick and tired of it and I was just going to get the video out and just call it done so I just rapidly did it. Now with Eschen Grey and Grey Sear, I'm going to do the undercoating. With an airbrush, I apply Eschen Grey on the underside and Grey Sear from the upside to create a light and dark values. Now here's the thing. In the end, this was uh, wasted. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because I tried to use s speed painting methods, quick methods, so it's hard to tell that balance between if I'm going to need something or I'm not going to need something in the end. In the end, this kind of was wasted. I should have just used the pure colors. This step could have been skipped entirely. Alright, with Evil Sun Scarlet and mixed with Lamin Medium to create a wash, I then apply this all over. But in the end, uh, red paints are very strong and pigmented, so it really didn't mm, blend as well. It wasn't as see-through as I would like, but luckily it didn't really matter here. Honestly, looking back, I could have just started with just a simple base layer of Evil Sun Scarlet. Probably an airbrush would have been better to give me overall lighting and shading, and it would have saved some time, but now I know. Alright, going to oils, I take cadmium red and magenta, I mix them together and create a reddish purple, and then add mineral spirits in to create a wash, and then I apply it all over. And then I wipe it down after the fact, so that it's only in the deepest, darkest recesses. And there is a lot of subtle shading in the muscle tone.
Now with Wild Rider Red, I decided to try to dry brush this all over. However, there was a problem. The color was a little too close to what I had before, and so it was very hard to detect it. It was too subtle of a transition, so it didn't really matter too well. And so then I applied another layer of the oil wash that I had in order to add another layer of shadow, and then I wiped it down. And it was so-so. Alright, and then with pure magenta, I then make a wash of it and just apply it all over the model, which I then wipe. And so his feet and hands are a darker color of purple, and well, except his left hand. And so I apply an extra layer or two of magenta on there so that it coats the thing and darkens it. But that, it just didn't really work too well in the end. And then, of course, I then go back and do some spot, uh, after wiping down a lot, I then do like some spot applying the uh, oil wash in certain recesses and stuff like that to add extra shadow. Alright, trying something. I'm going to take some lamp black oil color, mix it in with the magenta, and then apply this onto his right hand and his two feet. And then I will wipe it off extra. It's not an oil wash, I mix it down to a sludge of paint essentially, and then wipe it off to darken his ligaments. Alright, moving on. We're gonna go with Emperor's Children, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on his hair. So we'll start off with a base layer of Emperor's Children, the brightest. Then we're gonna go back with that uh, black and purple uh, oil paint I made and apply it all over. Then do a wipe. Then do a wash, dry brush. Essentially what's happening, think of it like clay. I am going back and forth, dry brushing, adding wash, wiping, stuff like that to get a nice consistent shade of brightness and shadow in there. And that's essentially all that I do.
Okay, I'm gonna try to do some fixes. So with Druchi Violet and Troll Slayer Orange, we're gonna start with Troll Slayer Orange. I'm gonna dry brush his hand and his feet to add like a highlight layer. And then with Druchi Violet, I am going to, with an airbrush, spray it onto his hands and feet to then darken it into a darker purple. And then I do the same thing with his hair. I darken most of his hair, but I leave some parts untouched as sort of like highlights or where the light would hit. Like his, I don't know, the first, like above his forehead, that place is much lighter and other places are darker and lighter. And I try to work with that. All right, with Xerxes Purple and Jean Sealer Purple, I then use it to dry brush. I use Xerxes Purple and dry brush his hands and feet. And then I go with Jean Sealer Purple and dry brush his hands and feet. And uh, they look okay. So with Troll Slayer Orange and not Emperor's Children because I ended up not using it. I take Troll Slayer Orange, water it down a bit, and apply it onto the his face on the straight edges in order to make it stand out more. The problem is it standed out a lot. <laughs> so that was a bit too much. Alright, we're going back to Lamian Medium with Evil Suns. We're basically going to water down the Evil Suns with Lamian Medium and we're going to apply it onto his face again to tone down the very sharp edge highlights that I have on his face to bring it more in. It's still going to be a bit sharp, but it's the face it has to draw in uh, the focus. And so this will tone it down a bit. And then with Thondia Brown, Ironically, Fenrisian Grey and Ulthwan Grey, we're going to be painting up uh, his eyes. So we're going to start with Thondia Brown and we're going to water it down a bit and we're just going to tap, 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 apply it so it flows into his eyes to darken the eyes so we have the shadow. Then with Fenrisian Grey, we're going to apply it to his, how do I put it, his eyelid right underneath and his eye. And then with Ulthwan Grey, we're going to apply this onto his eye to be a build up from the bluish to the white. And then with a 0.25 millimeter micro pen, we're going to fill in his eye. So we're going to do a bunch of tap, tap, taps in the center, and we're going to slowly expand them out, make sure they're still, it's still round, but just a bunch of little taps and squiggles, basically. We don't want to really try to draw anything. Now, with ironically Fenrisian Grey, Grey Sierra, and Ulthwan Grey, we're going to be painting his robe. So we start with the base layer of Fenrisian, then with an airbrush, we're going to spray uh, Grey Sierra onto it from up above to create the light. And then with Ulthwan Grey, we're going to paint strong hard lines, well, somewhat soft, it's a bit watered down a bit, to on the most strongest folds to catch the light. Alright, now with Cerulean Blue Hue, I create a wash of this, apply it all over the robes, and then wipe. Alright, with Baharoth Blue and Hoeth Blue, we're going to paint the little uh, frills on his uh, robes. So I'm going to do reverse highlighting. I'm going to paint the highlight color first, fill out all the edges, and then I'm going to fill it in with Hoeth Blue, because I find it easier and more consistent to get the thin lines.
Alright, so for one of the longest steps, Corvus Black, Fenrisian Grey, Emperor's Children, Druchi Violet, and Baharoth Blue, we're going to paint the wings. Now, because they are such a centerpiece, they have to be of high quality. So I'm going to use the airbrush. We're going to start with Corvus Black, and we're going to paint the black parts of the wings. Then we're going to switch to Fenrisian Grey and paint the in-between, the black and the pink. And then with Emperor's Children, we're going to paint the pink. And then, once that's done, we're going to take Druchi Violet and apply that on some areas where the pink is to darken it. Uh, do it in small spurts so it can dry in time, because if you let it just keep flowing, it's just going to pool up and look terrible. Alright, and back to the ironically Fenrisian Grey, and we're going to do a dry brush all over, trying to catch all the edges of the wings. All over. This took a while. Then we're going to go to Baharoth Blue and do a light dry brushing on all the tips of the wings as best we can. More of a lighter dry brushing everywhere. And then we're going to go with Baharoth Blue, and this took a while, but not as long as you would think it would. We would then paint all the edges of every single wing or little tip because some of them couldn't be reached with the dry brush but also this strengthens the color and also the edges of uh, some of his wings and stuff uh, where the dry brushing didn't catch and stuff so this took a while it was a bunch of straight lines and V's and stuff like that but it eventually worked out it took it took less time than you would think but it still was a while And now with Lamian Medium, I went back with the Corvus Black, I watered it down a bit with Lamian Medium and added a little bit of water to flow. And basically the black on the wings had become too light because of all the dry brushing. And so I just reapplied this all over the black to darken it a bit and so that the highlight would stand out more and the dark would be more prominent. And now with Temple Guard Blue, and I didn't use Ultuan Grey, I then went and painted off these, I don't know what these would be called, but they're on his wings. And then I didn't highlight them because they looked good enough and I was worried I might screw something up. So I was like, uh, I'm getting too close to the sun here, a little better quit while I'm ahead. Alright, now with AK Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to uh, cover everything that we have done. I'm actually going to do two coats, especially on the wings, because uh, they need it. Oh, and uh, by this point, I noticed that there were feathers and stuff on Magnus's body that I completely ignored. 
So I'm just letting you know now, even though I just focused on the wings and stuff, I do cover his whole body, the wings, and I have to repaint those other wings, but I don't show it. All right, now with Exhaust Manifold from Vallejo Acrylic, a Corvus Black Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint in Vallejo Acrylic Duraluminum. Uh, these are basically dark black, well, a dark metal and a bright metal. We're gonna paint the metal. So we're gonna take the Exhaust Manifold and darken it with Corvus Black to make an even darker metal and apply it all over every single metal piece he has. Then once that's done, we're going to dry brush it with the Exhaust Manifold Pure to add some lighting to it. Then we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast and coat, basically paint everything in it to create a darker, somewhat yellowish. And then we're going to dry brush everything with Dura Aluminum. And then once that is done, we're going to then, with the brush, paint uh, the most raised areas and stuff on the armor pieces and metal pieces with it to make it look a bit better. And, eh, it's meh. Now we're going to take some Rhinox Hide, water it down until it's nice, and with a very fine brush we're going to paint all that metal filigree indent that is on his armor and stuff everywhere. All right, with Retributor Armor, Liberator Gold, and Vallejo Dura Aluminum, which is a bright silver, and I don't show it, but Balthazar Gold, I show it later, I'm gonna paint the gold. All right, so what I do is I take the Retributor Armor and I basically paint it as the base layer for all the gold. It takes a while. Now, once that is done, I then go with the Liberator Gold and paint the middle sections, the upper raised areas, highlights of all the gold. And then, then I use the Balthazar Gold by this time, and it's a little bit mixed with a little bit of the Retribute Armor to make it fine, and then I apply it on the, how do you put it, like corners or the depth, deep areas of some of the metal pieces to make it look like a dark to a light transition. And also I use the pure Balthazar Gold on some areas, because there's this filigree on some of his stuff, and like these, a lot of the Corvus, well birds, their eye sockets, I fill it with that to add extra depth. And then finally with Dura Aluminum, I apply this sparingly on the edges of the sharp pieces of gold here and there. Uh, I do actually mix a little bit with Liberator Gold because I don't want the pure, pure silver. It's a little too strong. So I mix it with a little bit of Liberator and apply it and it works pretty well.
Alright, I go with Exhaust Manifold. I'm pretty sure that they have a uh, Vallejo has a darker black, but I don't know about it and I don't have it. So I mix it with Abaddon Black and I just apply this onto the his spear shaft, and that's it. Alright, with Baharoth Blue and Hoeth Blue, we're going to highlight the blue parts of his uh, armor and stuff. So, there's two schools of camera. There's these tiny little slivers of detail and stuff. It's too small. I can't do any edge highlighting on them. So, I'm going to paint the Baharoth Blue first and then fill it in with Hoeth Blue. But for larger things like the beaks and stuff, I'm going to start with Hoeth Blue and then edge highlight them with Baharoth Blue. And that's pretty much the idea going in. If it's very small, start with the highlight, then fill in with Hoeth. If it's large, do Hoeth and do traditional highlights. Alright, so moving on to the horns with Rakarth Flesh, Pallid Witch Flesh, Steel Legion Drab, Corvus Black, and Lamian Meter, we're going to paint his horns. Alright, so what I'm going to do is start off with a layer of Rakarth Flesh all over. This is the base layer. Then I'm going to take Steel Legion Drab, mix it with Lamian Meter, make it into a very thin wash, and apply it all over. Sometimes a, f a few times, because it's very thin and subtle. Then we're going to redo the whole thing with Rakarth Flesh, but we're going to paint the upper half, essentially, uh, with it to create light and dark. And then what we're going to do then is with Rakarth Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh mix uh, for the horns coming out of his chest, use this to highlight. I used pure Pallid, but it was too strong, so a mix of Rakarth and Pallid works very well with that. Then taking uh, some pure Pallid Witch Flesh, I then paint the upper raised areas of his horns on his head and stuff, but it's a little too much. And so I, wa I go back and apply a bunch of washes with Steel Legion Drab all over until it's dark enough again, then I do a little bit of highlight with the Pallid Witch Flesh again. Then I go to Corvus Black and paint the very tips of his head horns. And then with Steel Legion Drab, I then use it in a fine brush and paint in the filigree on his chest horns. And so this was a lot of back and forth of trying to get basically the lower half that's darker, has darker uh, colored horns, the more raised areas have more right, uh, brighter, and I go through the colors going from dark to light. In some areas there's visibly more darker because there are uh, recesses and stuff. And yeah, so this was a back and forth that actually took a while to get it decent. Now with Ulthuang Grey, I paint the whites of his eyes on his armor pieces. Yeah. All 
All right, with Temple Guard Blue and Cabalite Green, I'm going to paint this big feather that's on his weapon for some reason. So we take the Temple Guard Blue, paint it that. And then we're going to water down Cabalite Green until it's very thin like a wash, and we're going to apply a few layers, uh, getting darker towards the tip of the feather. Then we're going to do like some overbrushing or dry brushing on the feather. Uh, it's very smooth, so it won't really catch well to overbrushing. And then I apply another layer of Cabalite Green to redarken some areas of it, and that's it. It's just simple, quick, easy done. Alright, with Temple Guard Blue, Baharoth Blue, Hoeth Blue, and Druchi Violet, we're going to paint that fireball thing that's on his weapon. So I'm going to layer the whole thing in Temple Guard Blue. And I'm going to use an airbrush and airbrush down Baharoth Blue to create some light point on it. But unfortunately, this isn't that bright in the end. Then I get Hoeth Blue, and then I apply this on, like, the tips of his fire, the fire that's on there, to show it's darker. And then the very tips of the fire, I take some very watered-down Druchi Violet and apply Alright, we're going to try something. With Rhinox Hide, Mornfang Brown, and XV88, we're going to paint the base. So we can start off with a layer of Rhinox Hide, and we're going to dry brush with Mornfang. And then we're going to finish off with a dry brush of XV88. And it looks like a bunch of caked mud. Alright, with Elmer's School Gel Glue, uh, we're going to apply this on par parts of the base and then cover it with some green flock. And that's it, and we leave it to dry overnight. And then we begin a long assembly of putting all the nicks and doodads and I didn't notice this before but he's really hard to hold like straight up it's actually kind of difficult to get him uh, all there so All right, so apparently he's standing on a uh, Space Wolf Dreadnought arm. And so it's not really the focus of the thing, so I didn't bother showing how I painted it. But I will say, I painted this in less than 10 minutes, this whole arm and all the details and stuff. Going to show that it takes me much longer to do things on camera than behind the scenes. And so then I just super glue this onto the base. That, well, super glue it onto his foot first, and then super glue him onto the base. Alright, with Liquitex Gloss Varnish and AK Interact Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to do the final levels of well, polishing on this. And so, um, I applied Liquitex Gloss Varnish on like the wet things, the eyes, some gems, and stuff like that. And also, I forgot to pin the model at this point, I should have done it, because his base falls off because the super glue isn't adhered well enough. 
So before I do the matte varnish, I re-glue him to the base, and then I pin him through the foot. I don't show that, but I do now. And then with ultra matte varnish, I then apply this on all the things that I didn't varnish yet. So this is just a final level of varnishing on everything. And done. Three weeks. My goodness, this took forever. I have less time to paint than I normally would, but him, I basically repainted him like three or four times essentially because like many of the things I did just didn't work. Uh, so trying to do speed painting sometimes just doesn't work and make and the effects don't work as well as you would like. And this is the first time I painted a body that was a giant humanoid muscle body, so most of my techniques wouldn't really work on that. And so constantly going back and forth, trial and error. Uh, think of it like sculpting something out of clay. I'm going back and forth, going back and forth to get it right. And so this was a commission. I was paid for this, so that's why this is so out of the blue. And yeah, uh, so that's why I picked up a Magnus and stuff. So I hope he likes it. There were some issues here and there, but overall I was told to follow the box art, and so I tried to copy the box as best as possible. So as for my rating, I legit don't like it. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. Well, maybe it's because it's just like nothing I did worked. It was just like the fifth thing that worked for every single thing. Uh, some things are glaring spots. So the thing is, this is such an ensemble piece. His wings are like the main catcher, and his armor flows into that. And so when some things are elevated to so high, other things, if they're not as good, they stick out like a sore thumb. Some of the Milliput stuff can be seen. Some of the pieces on him are not fully, like, properly aligned right or glued in because the super glue adhered immediately, but it's hard to notice. But on a tabletop from a distance, this guy looks good. As far as the rating, I'd have to give him more like a 7 out of 10. But you know what? I think about it, it's because, like, overall, I just don't like the way he looks on the box. <laughs> um, I don't know what I would do if it was, like, there's a big difference between the models that I paint to sell and the models that I paint for my army. Just look up some of my Nurgle stuff, my Rodigus or my Horticulus Slimex. Those are for me, and I go. There's, they have, they're, they're different. They're on a different level. And so, trying to copy the box art, um, it feels a little lifeless, which is a bit hard to say. The wings are incredible. Those are 10 out of 10. Um, some things just didn't work. I guess it was mostly just frustration that slowed things down. But, and the base is okay. I mean, it matches the box. I just don't have any rocks to put on it. That Space Wolf piece, though, uh, that was very fast. I was surprised at how well I put that together. Uh, overall, yeah, it'd be a 7 out of 10. It could be an 8 or so. Just some odd things here and there. Uh, but overall it's done. Going back to Votan so I can finish it off. I have to hurry this up and get all these things done before Corn comes out, or whatever Age of Sigmar is doing. I'd be painting more if I actually had better marketing for it, uh, so I actually know what's coming out. Uh, shoot, there's so many models that came out that I wanted to paint. I had no idea that came out. I had no idea those dragons came out. Goodness, I wanted to paint those. But, alright then. So, like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, and more to come. Whenever. Who knows? Bye.